Hi, uh, today we're going to talk about file handling with libgdx or in libgdx. So Android and the desktop are a little different when it comes to file handling. For this we had to unify file access. Um, we introduced four different types of files uh, which should make handling files a little easier and a little bit more consistent across platforms. So the two major types are internal files and external files. Internal files are files that come with your application, usually things like music, graphics and so on and so forth. External files are files that you write yourself uh, to persist some state, say a custom level from a level editor in your game or high scores or stuff like this. The two other file types are less co commonly used. The class path just works like the class path in Java, so you can access resources within your Java files. This works on Android and on the desktop, but it has some limitations, of course. Uh, and you can also specify absolute file uh, file paths, so don't use this. We only have this in here for some very, very specific situations. Usually you're fine with just using internal and external files. Uh, in this video we are only going to talk about these two. The class path is mostly relevant in the domain of applets. So what's an internal file? An internal file is, as I said, a file that comes with your application. On the desktop we map this, uh, we map paths to internal files, which are usually relative paths, to the base directory of your application. On Android we map this to the uh, assets directory. So any path you specify to, a in to an internal file gets either mapped to the base directory of your application on the desktop or to the assets relative to the assets directory on Android. External files are files that don't come with your application, which you write yourself. On Android, this is relative to the external storage path, which is usually the SD card. <coughs> On the desktop, we decided that the user's home directory would be a good place to store any additional data. Uh, okay, so as you remember in the last video, we talked about the application interface and its backends, and it has a couple of mo modules, and the files module is the one which is responsible for handling files. Um, it has a couple of methods which allows us to create uh, so-called file handle instances to an internal, external, absolute or class path file. So what you're actually going to do is just get a hold of the files instance, call one of these methods and then proceed uh, working with the file via the file handle. The paths are of course relative to the respective file types. Um, Besides those methods, you also have two helper methods or query methods which allow you to s query the, the external storage path as well as whether the storage, the external storage is available. So let's have a look at how this looks in code. We are going to write a very small example which accesses an internal file and which writes an external file. Um, for this I have those two projects which are basically the same as in the last video. I just renamed them and I also renamed the starter applications so instead of lifecycle blah 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 we have now desktop starter and on Android we have the Android starter which is just the same. Uh, both instantiate an application instance and all we have to do is set the application listener we want to run. So in this example we are going to write a new application listener which is our file IO example and it looks like this. Since we are not going to render anything, we don't care for the rest of the methods of the application listener, we'll just read and write files in the create method, so that's only happening once at startup of our application. The first thing we want to do is read uh, the contents of an internal file. So I told you an internal file on the desktop is relative to the application space directory, which is in this case the GDX tut, tut tutorial directory. Crazy name. So what we're going to do is create a folder wherein all our resources are going to get stored. Uh, I put a file in there, let's call it test.txt. So you see we have a data folder in our base directory of our desktop application and inside this folder we have a test.txt uh, file. Let's put in something awesome. And what we are going to do in our application listener is basically just read, read in the contents of this file. So, as I said, the first thing we have to do is get a file handle to this file, which is basically pretty much the same as a file 
uh, in standard Java. So let's get this handle. Uh, and here's a little trick. We have a static class which is called GDX. We already saw this in the last video, which allows you instant access to all the modules of libgdx or rather of a libgdx application. This includes the application itself, the audio mo module, the files module, the graphics module, and the input module, as well as direct access to OpenGL facilities. We'll talk about those later on. So we are interested in the files module. So we say GDX dot files dot and we want an internal <coughs> file, so we say internal and specify the path. So the paths of internal files are usually relative. In this case we want to access a file in the data folder, which is called test.txt. Then we import the file handle specification while pressing Control, Shift and O. Great, now we have our file handle. So how do we get the content? In Java you usually work with input streams, so we have a read method which will give you an input stream to this file. There's also a write method, but for obvious reasons that won't work um, for internal files, since those are stored in the assets folder on Android, which can be written to, we don't allow writing to internal files. For that you have to use external files. Okay, so we're going to read this little sucker, and using input streams is a little cumbersome, so Nate came up with an obviously awesome idea and implemented the read string method which will just return the contents of the file in form of a string. So we want to lock that so we use gdx get access to the application and use the lock method and we just give it a tag and we lock the file content. Okay. So, that's that. Easy, right? Uh, let's run this little sucker. For this we have to set the file AO example as the application listener of our juggle application on our desktop. And let's see what this does. Okay, so our application is not doing anything really, it's just rendering a black screen. The interesting part is happening in the console. All we do is lock the contents of the file to the console. So that's not really rocket science, right? Uh, let's close this. Of course, the file handle uh, class has a couple of more methods. Uh, please check the Java docs for more information on what works when and so on and so forth. Uh, so as you can see, it's pretty extensive and pretty close to the file class in plain old Java. Right, so the next thing we are going to try is how to do this on Android. And as I told you, on Android, internal files are relative to the assets folder. So all we have to do is put in the data we have in the desktop project into the assets folder of the Android project. That's going to be a little cumbersome, of course, uh, if you have a lot more resources and assets in your, in your uh, internal file folders. Uh, Moritz posted a blog post uh, which tells you how to you can set up Eclipse to link this folder to the Android um, project so you don't have to copy over files and keep them duplicate. Oh great, now I did something stupid. Okay, that should be it. So as you can see, we put all the internal files in the assets folder. In this case we even have a subdirectory called data and the test.txt file. We don't have to change anything here. All we have to do is tell the Android starter that we want to use the file.io example application listener this time, which houses our logic, and we run that little beast on Android now. As in the previous video, I can't do this in the emulator because the emulator sucks donkey ass, so I attach my HTC Hero, and we are going to execute this on the HTC Hero and just watch the lockcat output. Right, so let's run this on Android right click on the Android project, run as Android application and awesome source commences. So you see I already tested this beforehand. So the application is starting up on the device and it's running and we get the same output as on the desktop. Great. So that's internal files and that's really all you need to know about them for the most part. You usually don't even uh, read them yourself, but pass the file handle to 
uh, different facilities of libgdx like for instantiating textures or playing back music or loading a sound effect and stuff like this you only have to pass in the file handle and the module will do whatever needs to be done okay so for the second uh, type uh, of files the external files we do basically the same what we want to do is write an external file which we call high score and put in some information and then check it out okay so instead of an internal file we are going to get a file handle to an external file and we just call this I don't know say high score dot dot whatever so on the desktop this will be in the users home directory in my case that's Oh, I hope I don't have anything embarrassing in it. Who? Okay. Um, that's going to be here. So that's C. Eh, fuck you, Windows. C users M Sechner on uh, on Linux that will be home M Sechner and so on and so forth. So our, fi our file will get placed here. Um, once we have the file handle, we can call the file write method which takes a parameter which tells whether we want to append data to the file or if we want to overwrite it so we say we want to overwrite it and specify false and what we get out is an output stream a classic Java output stream we're going to use this to write a single byte to this file let's just put out minus two and then we close the stream and all this has to be done within a try catch block so that's not the best way to do it within a try catch block please 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 look up how you do that in java uh, usually you'd have this outside of your try catch block oh i can just do it it eats away the time the time Hurrah. okay something happened here and finally we try to close the output stream and you also have to put a try catch around this, so Java is really awesome. Right. So, a gazillion lines, um, number of lines of code to write a single output file. So, let's run this real quick. On a desktop, we now expect to get a new file here, unless I fucked up in a code somewhere. Dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum. Dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum. Faster! Okay. Yes, yeah, so we didn't get an exception. <laughs> well, we silently catch any exceptions, so <laughs> no. But here is the file in C user mzechner as expected for an e external file. And we can do the exact same thing on Android. So let's run this example again on Android. And this time the file we go relative to the SD card or external storage. So we can actually watch the the file explorer. But first let's have a look at Lockcat to know when it's done. So that's it basically. So we should have a high scores dot that on our SD card. La 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 and there we go. It's only one byte big. Okay, so that's external and internal files with libgdx. The other two file types, class path and absolute, should not be used unless you know what you do. Internal files can only be read and not written to. External files are free for all. Um, please refer to the Java docs for more information of what methods are available for file handler and what you can do with them. Okay, ciao.